And we took a week or two off from the fan show due to some travel complications and some scheduling conflicts, but we are back and we got a doozy for you guys today. I am joined by my friends Skilly and Trevor. Skilly coming to us from Chardon, Ohio. Trevor from Brooklyn, Ohio, meaning we're all in the greater Cleveland area tonight. And guys, it feels good to talk football differently than we have for the first seven weeks of the season. There's a little enthusiasm back in the air and entering the game last week. Or really, two weeks ago against the Bengals, this team felt like you're the walking dead. No one wanted to talk about them. No one wanted to discuss them. But after a win and after a Jameis three-touchdown performance, the Browns have some life. Skilly, do you get that same sense? Man, this has been the first time since really being a Browns fan that I've been apathetic during the season. Like, usually I am as gung-ho as G, which is why I love Bull kind of bringing me back. But, man... It's been rough. I'm not going to lie. So seeing Jameis come in and kind of change the game, I mean, it's – it's he just needs to keep it up because I'm excited. Trevor, you get the same sentiment? Um, 100%. I mean, um, I, I don't know. one can unfortunately see it. I'm wearing my um, Ozzie Newsome Browns jersey. Look at that. This is, this is a vintage quarterback right now for a vintage style of offense. You know, have a statue of quarterback. There's no – QB design runs, running backs run, wide receivers catch. You know, I love the entire offense in this whole entire way. And, I mean, Jameis Winston came in similar to I saw Flacco last year, just young, playing with house money, huck that ball off. If it's an interception, cool. If it's an interception, I mean, eh, anything like that. If it's a completion, cool. Touchdown, cool. If – that, that's how he is. That's how he's always played. And you're going to take those risks. But on the other hand, in the spectrum, you are also getting those huge plays. You're driving the ball down the field. Things we never saw with Watson. So we're recording this on Thursday night. Let's break the fourth wall. It is Thursday night at 6.54. I told the guys to show up at 6.50. We'll start at 7. That usually means they log in at 6.59. G. Bush, if he was on this, would be here at 7.03. They were on at 6.48, ready to rock at 6.50. So first off, kudos to both of you. That is a new fan show record. I'm glad I actually logged in when I told you how to log in, or y'all have been sitting there for a while. But spoiler alert, tomorrow in the WKYC portion of the show, the main topic of the TV show on Friday is going to be, can Jameis play better or was that peak Jameis? So Skilly, I want to start with you. Can you know, we see I a better level and a better performance from Jameis Winston whether it be this week or down the road, or was the Baltimore game 334 and three tutties, is that about as much as you can ask for? Is that the peak of Jameis Winston? Hey, man, I, I hope it's not the peak, but that's a pretty good peak if uh, yeah, if true. we're sitting there. You know, it's <laughs> it's not going to be a bad thing, you know, especially since, you know, one of the things when we, we, we picked him up was I had to look back and I forgot, you know, what he had done back at the Saints and – after looking at everything, you know, I was kind of happy that he was going to be back in the Sean up after we let obviously Flacco go. So, you know, kind of seeing him step up in here and, you know, the season that he had with the saints after getting LASIK 14 and three, that could, you know, it's, it's not the peak. It shouldn't be the peak at least, you know, and, and that's the one thing that I love that uh, Sean King said, you know, don't put a cap on what this guy can do. I mean, he's going to drive the ball down the field. He's going to give you a good game to watch. Just hopefully not a lot of, they're under the other team, unfortunately, like <laughs> almost happened at the end of the uh, Baltimore game. But yeah, there's there's some good things coming. I'm excited. Trevor, is there more to Jameis Winston or is what we saw against Baltimore, in your opinion, kind of the height of the Jameis mania? Well, I, I think personally, I don't think that is the peak. But I mean, I really thought it was a really good game. The other hand of that spectrum, too. That Ravens team going into, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was the 32nd ranked pat, uh, pass defense. They have not been a great unit with the pass. And unfortunately, you went up against a quarterback that is excellent at throwing the ball downfield and making those big chunk plays. So I don't think that is peak Jameis. I mean, we're talking about a quarterback that threw for 5,000 yards. What was it, 33 touchdowns and 30 interceptions? 33. I mean – you you divide those interceptions in half. That's an MVP year from any other quarterback. So, and I'm not obviously not going to say that he's going to win MVP or anything like that. That's far from it. But he is going to make this team interesting to watch. I'm very excited to see how Cedric Tillman and 
and um, you know David and Joku. All those guys develop under Jameis Winston. Same with Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy, who got the big bulk of the contract. And unfortunately, that's why Amari Cooper is no longer with us. But you live and you learn. Hopefully, these young guys can step it up. I actually think, in a way, and I don't mean to discredit Jameis. I don't know how much better you can get than three thirty-four, three touchdowns, no picks. Like. When you look at the statue, we all understand Kyle Hamilton dropped the pick that all three of us probably would have made. And he also threw a pass to Cedric Tillman down the middle that went right through Eddie Jackson's hands, literally right through his hands. He also in the red zone threw one trying to throw it away that the Ravens could have picked off. It could have looked a lot worse. But considering it didn't, I kind of think that may have been the peak of Jameis. But I also think the Browns don't need 334, three touchdowns, no picks to beat some of the teams on their schedule. So... I don't mean that to like damper or, or, you know, put a limit on what Jameis can do. I just, how many quarterbacks are throwing for 350 and three touchdowns on a weekly basis? Like, that's a really, really, really damn good game. And, you know, they got the turnover luck against Baltimore. Will it happen against Los Angeles? I got my fingers crossed. I and mean, if you can't see my toes, but they're crossed too, I promise. Uh, I, I'm not sure. But if that's the peak, that's a pretty damn good peak. So uh, oh, but we'll see. Guys, sure. we'll start with you, Trevor, on this one. Nick Chubb is slowly making his way back from his injury. I want we didn't have a fan show the week Nick came back, and we didn't do one last week. What was going through your mind as a fan when Nick took the field for the first time, knowing how hard he had worked to get back to this point? I mean, it is absolutely incredible. Just the the amount of determination that that man has and the amount of work that he puts in day in and day out is unmatched by a lot of other players in the league. I I mean, personally, if I tore my MCL, all the CLs in my leg, <laughs> bye, I'm done, retired, bad career. But, you know, he, he is such a tremendous athlete to watch. And that's universal. Every single friend I've had that is a, you know, Pittsburgh fan, Ravens fan, Eagles fan, they, they, they unfortunately do exist here. Um, you know, they have said Nick Chubb is the guy like they love him. I've only heard one time that Nick Chubb is overrated and I discredited that man immediately and I showed him the stat sheet. I was just like, how is that overrated? The dude is amazing. It, it'll take it, it'll be no, a little sorry, bit Trevor, sorry, no, it's all you. No, no, perfectly fine. I'm just saying um, he's coming back from a bad injury. Give it a little bit of time. I don't think he'll blow up this game, but maybe the next game against the Saints, maybe that could be the time. They got a bye week in between two, so by the time they play the Saints, it'd be a full month back in full practice as a full participant. So we'll see what happens. Skilly, mm -hmm. that moment Nick Chubb ran on the field, I live about a mile from the stadium. I can see it out my window right now. I swear to goodness, people thought I was lying. I had someone come over and test it. You can't hear all the cheers. I don't know what's happening on a play-to-play -play basis, but I know when something crazy happens, it felt like I was at the stadium when Nick Chubb took the field. That's how loud the crowd got. It was incredible. I mean, he's the man in Cleveland. I mean, I mean, he, he just is. I mean, everybody wants to be him, wants to do what he does. And, and the way that he conveys himself is just, you know, professionalism in every single aspect of, of the word, really. So, I mean, the fact that he can get back on the field and be this explosive this early and not have the mental part really playing a, a big part in his game. Because, like, I snapped my leg walking on ice. Now, meaning to, obviously, Black Ice was walking out to my car and I snapped my leg. Like, I can't watch somebody go on a slip and slide. Like, just to know, be able to. Laugh. I'm not laughing at you. That's <laughs> objectively a funny statement. So, no, but I mean, but the mental aspect of it, I mean, it's huge to be able to like, run into a line, make a cut, and then just to be thinking the entire time, man, if somebody just comes down on my knee, I've got to go through a year worth of just getting back to where I'm at now. And the funny thing was, you know, I was an athlete my, my entire life. I never was at the, the peak where G. Bush and everybody was, but. You know, I never thought about that. When you're hurt, everybody else is getting better and you're just staying stagnant. And really, you're just trying to work back to baseline. You know, I had never thought of it like that. And, you know, thinking about, you know, people talking about, you know, injuries. And when you come back, are you going to still be the same person? It's like, yeah, well, you should be, you know, but everybody else is progressing. You're getting to, to baseline again. And, and the fact that he's gotten to, in my opinion, getting back to baseline this quickly is it's a great thing to see. Are you guys Ohio State fans as well? Big time. 
I should be as much as uh, I'm in Columbus, but I, I didn't have the time, <laughs> you know, growing up as a kid, I was in a million different sports. So Browns were my thing. Well, let me ask Trevor this then. Trevor, do you hate Jim Harbaugh? <laughs> well, I mean, who, who doesn't? So I, I have this thing with, um, I, I was texting my girlfriend before the, before I even got on here. She wished me good luck and everything. What's her name? You know? Give her a shout out. Oh, love you, Marianne. <laughs> What's up, Marianne? Thanks for letting Trevor come on with us tonight. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, uh, we were we were just having this uh, text chain of, about how much we hate Jim Harbaugh, and apparently he was uh, having nicotine on the sidelines last week. I don't know if you guys heard about that. I did not see that. No. <clears throat> yeah, apparently he had uh, nicotine on the sidelines or something, and could face a heavy suspension if he continues the behavior. So I thought that was pretty funny. You know, you go from college college football and just you know, the whole science stealing scandal and all that stuff, you know, big cheater, can't stand the guy, hate Michigan. <laughs> to go to go to the pros and start doing this stuff already is, I, I can't stand the dude. I, I've i always hated Jim Harbaugh. John, I know I should hate John because he's the coach of the Ravens. He's a respectable guy. He's a nice, <laughs> he's like a nice coach, like a guy you'll want to sit coach, down too. and, Real good oh, coach. he's really good. You know, he's, Got them to the Super Bowl before, man, with Flacco and Dilfer, I want to say as well. So with and this game, with this game this weekend, does the Harbaugh scaries from the last three years at Michigan and Ohio State? And granted, I understand there's some there cheating allegations. It may not be 100 percent fair. Like, does that scar you as a Browns fan? Does any of that seep into the back of your head and just say, "Damn, we, we haven't beaten this guy in forever. Maybe he's got." Ohio's number, even though the Browns and the Buckeyes, very different organizations, programs, all that. Worried about that a little bit? Not really, because you're he went from Michigan, which it seemed that you know, Michigan and Ohio State, they get like they're big schools, man. They get everybody. Oh, it looks like we just lost Skilly. We'll get Skilly back in here. Finish your answer. He must okay. have uh, disconnected his camera. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, so it it looks like that. You know, they, they get defensive playmakers all the time. Now you're going to the NFL, which, yes, I know it's a higher end area, but you're also going up against the best of the best from college in their areas. So the Browns offensive line going into this game is a lot better. And I cannot believe I'm actually saying that it's a lot better than what we've seen in a few weeks past. So. The defense doesn't really scare me nearly as much. To me, I'm kind of, I'm kind of perplexed on why their offense isn't doing as good as it should be. I mean, I understand they don't have the playmakers, and but Justin Herbert's there. You have the quarterback. If you get yeah. some playmakers there, you got something. You know, the Browns have the opposite problem. I see Skilly getting ready to hop back in here, so we'll bring him back in. He must have been so okay. scared of Harbaugh that he had to drop out. But, you know, <laughs> to your point on the Chargers offense, Herbert's good. He's never, in my opinion, he's better than some of the numbers. They don't ask him to do a lot, but yes, uh, it is interesting as we get Skilly back in here. Welcome back, Skilly. Not quite sure what happened there, but welcome Yeah, back. my camera's trying to overheat on me, you know. <laughs> All right, Ooh, well, fun. Hopefully it, uh, it, it hangs on for the next 10 minutes, so we'll – Put a bow on this, but it is interesting that we're talking about the Chargers offense here, Skilly. They mm -hmm. have a quarterback. They have a good offensive line, but when you have no playmakers whatsoever and you look on the outside, Lad McConkey is coming into his own, but he's still a rookie receiver. Quentin Johnson was their first round pick last year. He's been disappointing. Josh Palmer, I thought was going to have a good year. He is not. They have no tight ends. Dobbins had a great first two weeks. He's been really quiet since then. They struggle to move the ball in a league and an era where it feels like teams are able to move it between the twenties relatively easily. And then you get to the red zone and they're actually pretty darn good in the red zone when a lot of teams that can't move the ball aren't. So they're almost backwards. And I'm just, it worries me that they're four and three, despite the fact none of it makes sense. They feel very fraudulent at four and three. They haven't played a lot of good teams. They beat up on a lot of bad quarterbacks and that's why their defensive numbers are so high, but their offense just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. They try to be a ground and pound team, but I'm not sure Dobbins is great, and as good as Herbert is, if you don't have guys open, I think we've learned it's hard to uh, hard to create guys getting open if they're not good enough to get that separation. Skilly, what do you make of this Chargers offense heading into the matchup against the Browns? 
you know, I'm right there with you. You know, I wasn't scared of him coming into the game, but, you know, having both JOK and Ward out, I mean, that's that is a little, that's a definitely a little worrisome. Definitely a little worrisome. Yeah, a little bit. But, I mean, I have faith in our defense, too. You know, everybody stepping up on the D line is going to be huge. I mean, Mike Hall, yep. I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to see Quincy's breakdown of Mike Hall, but wow. I mean, he's done some things already. Second game. <laughs> you know, he missed really half the year. He has a chance to be really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I was a lot on that same camp of, you know, don't put the Aaron Donald name on him. But, like, as soon as he was, uh, you know, doing that last game, I was like, man, maybe the comparison isn't, like, obviously far-fetched, but maybe not that far-fetched. Mm -hmm. Maybe as a career end goal, you know, getting to the top 10, you know, defensive lineman type deal. But, yeah, man, he's got a motor on him, and he can move. Like, watching him chase down Lamar, that was fun. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do after uh, running after Herbert and whatnot. But not that worried about their offense. I'm more worried about what our offense is going to look like. Really. Yeah, it's fair. You know, when it comes to player comparisons, it's a good point you make, Skilly, that you can say someone reminds you of player X doesn't mean they're going to live up to that player. Like to say someone has shades of Aaron Donald doesn't mean they're going to be arguably the greatest defensive player ever. But the way they move, the way they navigate off blocks and in and out of gaps and whatnot like it could remind you from a stylistic standpoint of how they play and Mike Hall was really good in the second game like really 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 I haven't seen Quincy's video but when I was going through the all 22 we had the segment I think it was it was Wednesday we did it on the show like he just pops off the screen in ways you haven't seen a defensive tackle and the good news for Mike Hall Justin Herbert's mobile but he ain't Lamar Jackson so it's gonna be tough for him to chase down arguably the greatest running quarterback in the history of the league I don't think we'll have those same issues chasing down uh Justin Herbert. Trevor, I want to get your opinion on this part of the game. We've talked coaching. We've talked Nick Chubb. We've talked Jameis Winston. Is this a game that will determine the future of this Browns franchise? And let me clarify that question with, with a little more context. The trade deadline's on Tuesday. The Browns lose this game. Even if they win out the rest of the way, they're probably going to be on the outside of the AFC playoffs because they would lose the tiebreaker to teams like the Chargers and a couple other teams. They lose this, they're probably in sell mode. And if they go in sell mode, that means are you keeping Jameis around? Are you going to go with DTR? I feel like this Sunday's game in a matchup of a four and three team versus a two and six team holds like monumental weight for how the Browns are going to navigate the next few seasons. You kind of get that same feeling that this game is way more important to the overall future of this franchise than just their current playoff seeding. Um, I mean, I like to think that in a little bit, but on the other hand as well, I don't think so. Cause I feel like starting Deshaun Watson through that time already kind of, I mean, I don't want to sound like, you know, Oh my God, he's this bad, but it kind of sound like they punted a little bit already once he got hurt and you're just kind of throwing stuff and see what sticks. So in my opinion, I feel like if you win this game, that's great. Will Can you do it consistently enough against the meat and potatoes of your schedule? Because you still got to face the Steelers twice. You got to face the Chiefs. You got to face the Ravens again. You got to face the Bengals again. And I I can't remember everyone else that's in you there. The Dolphins, you have Dolphins. Uh, the Broncos, who are scrappy. You got the Saints. So Broncos it's are young schedule. and scrappy. Yeah, tough schedule. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on the tough half. So if you lose this game, I mean, no, there's no disrespect to the Chargers or anything, but they're like in the middle of the pack. Like you got to win this game. team to play against. You got to win. This you game. have to win this game. It's at home. You, yeah, it's at home. You got. I mean, I'm going to it. They better freaking win. <laughs> <laughs> Which I did use game time. That app is does save a crap ton of money. I'm, I, I have to add, man. People always. Oh my people, god! Like, it it really does. Some of the promo deals mm -hmm. really do work. So they, yeah, they all no, work. With, but some of them without a doubt. Oh Glad yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, it's it's been fantastic using that app. I'm going to the Cavs game tomorrow, and I'm going to Browns on Sunday. Love it. So I'm nice. really really excited. Love it, Skilly. Do you feel this game has a little more importance than just a Week Nine matchup, or are you focused singularly on what's ahead of the Browns this particular Sunday? I mean, this is absolutely a must win if you want to do anything the rest of the season. If not, I do think we are sellers at the trade deadline. I mean, there's I'd be shocked if we're not at least. I mean, I think Smith's gone. Yep. I hope not, Jameis, because I was that person when they brought him in. I was kind of alluding to it earlier. 
who knows if he's going to be our bridge quarterback. I know you guys were talking about it this week, like three or four year deal. Let's make it happen. Even if it's one that's, you know, just in the meantime to get us through to our next quarterback. I mean, I just, I, I can't handle these, you know, tanking every other year just to try to get that number one draft pick again. You know, I can't go back to that because I was born in 91. I've been a Browns fan my entire life. I've never known what it's like to have a winning season back to back. That's no. insane. <laughs> it's such a valid point, And I hadn't thought of it till Trevor, you actually sparked the thought and I'm going to bring this up tomorrow. If the Browns lose and sell, right. And you could argue they've kind of already punted on this year by continuing to put out Deshaun in weeks four, five, six after it just appeared he didn't have it. They punted in 2022 Deshaun's first year by having Jacoby Brissett be the guy you trusted for six games. Once this suspension went from six to 11, they could have made a move to get a more competitive quarterback in there. They decided not to and essentially punted there. They went for it last year. It didn't happen. If they sell this year, they'd be punting on two of three years in the prime of Miles Garrett of Nick Chubb, of Denzel Ward, of Joe Batonio, of Wyatt Teller. I swear to goodness I hadn't thought of this, but when I look at it from that lens, that's kind of unacceptable. Like, I, I don't know how you can sell it to a oh. fan base when you have two guys in Chubb and Miles and Batonio, so two and a half, if you want to put Batonio in that tier with those guys. I think he's a little tier under, but whatever, that's minutia. Those are three guys that could be in Canton, and you're just going to punt two or three years of their primes? Like, it doesn't sit Just well. Just because you have a trash quarterback that can't throw the ball middle of the field, it's it, it is unacceptable. I can't I can't stand that. And the fact the fact that they kept trotting him out there means that you know they want to get every every little bit of play time that they can out of him, which I understand to an extent. But when you're that bad, you gotta you gotta do what the Colts do with Richardson. You have to do what the what the Panthers do with the, with the Panthers. Cut them or bench them. That is the Russell best Wilson. solution you can do. R Russell Wilson, there's the other one. It's the All same right. thing. Well, let's go around the horn, guys. Make our predictions for Sunday. Skilly, we'll start with you. Give me the winner and give me a bold prediction, something to keep my eye out for in the Chargers-Browns Week 9 matchup. I think it's 24-19. And just because Bull and I both picked him up, I'm going to pick up uh, you know, Tillman with two touchdowns again. I need him to do some work on my fantasy team. It's been it's been a little rough, so he's got to do some work for me this week. Love it. Trevor, give me a score and a bold prediction to keep an eye on for Sunday. Well, for me, I'm going to go – I want to have the Cleveland Browns win, I'm going to say, 24-21 and the last-second field goal from Dustin Hopkins. I think this will be a game that will be back and forth. And I personally think that – oh, we lost Gilly again. He'll be back. His camera's yeah. overheating. I we'll make it work. <laughs> yeah, that this this whole thing is gonna happen. I personally believe this is gonna be the game where we see Nick Chubb not break out, but look steadily more like Nick Chubb. I I personally think he's gonna have a I think seventy five yards, a rushing touchdown, and a receiving touchdown. Love it. Well, that's bold. I love it. I actually think the game is not as close as you and Skilly. I'm picking the Browns to win 27-16. to 16. I think Jameis throws for two touchdowns again in my bold prediction. We talked about it earlier. Mike Hall Jr., not one, two sacks. The first two of his Ooh, NFL like career. That. Trevor, I, I like know you uh, recently started a YouTube channel. We'll give Skilly a sec to pop back in here. If not, we will uh, say goodbye. But let the people know if they liked what they heard today from you, where they can find you on your new YouTube channel. Yeah, so if anyone really likes uh, what they heard from me today, I know it didn't go into great detail as much. I mean, I'm de dealing with Mr. McNuggets and Skilly here. I, I want to give them as much time as they can as well. But, you know, um, if, anyone, if anyone wants to follow me on any of my social medias, you can follow me on Twitter at ScorpionLLXP. That is a capital S and a capital LLXP. And it is the same for my YouTube. It'll be Scorpion LLXP Sports. I do. I try my best and do Browns coverage and Browns rants every Sunday. I'm going to try and do the Cavs every Friday at the end of the week. And when Guardian season pulls around, I'll try and do them as much as I can. They're all, all three of them have been really fun to watch, though. So, well, especially the Browns now since they got Jameis. Awesome. Make sure now. you check it out. <laughs> Gilly, you want to plug yourself? Any, uh, any social I don't have a lot of social. 
I don't do a lot of social stuff. I mean, I've got a YouTube channel. If you want to check me out, Skilly125. Uh, I've got like 3,100 subs, but I don't put any content out there anymore. Wow. I used to put car stuff out there, but, you know, I, I thought about getting the channel back up and running. But, yeah, no, nothing really to plug. But everybody, make sure go back to the original channel, 11 to 1, every single Monday through Friday. And do this. So I, I haven't done it as much. I'm going to put a little plug in here for you guys. So what I like to do and what I like to think of the YouTube show as kind of like our little TV show. So why not, you know, you know, do that sub for $5 a month if you can do it. And then if you have the ability to give some to people that can't, I mean, share some love, right? I, I love, you know, doing the super chats and whatnot, but if you can gift members to other people, make some come back. You know, this is a great show. I promote it everywhere I can. So make sure you guys do too. Skill, you're the, the MVP of the chat some days. We really appreciate you. Trevor, we appreciate your support. I'm glad we got to uh, actually meet face-to-face -face after some emails back and forth. Make sure you guys check out both their YouTube pages. Maybe we'll bully Skilly into uh, putting some new content up there if we get some new subs out there. And definitely check out Trevor's work. Let's go, Browns. Appreciate you, too. And we'll see you guys Sunday after the game for the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show 2-Minute Report. For now, for Trevor, for Skilly, I'm McNuggets. Peace. See you, guys. Have a good one, guys. Stay